You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with Daniel on BRFM. This is the Daniel Monday Night Community Show on demand through YouTube. Thank you very much for choosing to listen to us through this method. If you'd like to keep up to date with when I add new interviews, then subscribe to this channel. We present I, the Son of God, with Will O'Connell, Katie Williams and Josh Lewis as Paul. So, let's turn our attention to Norway. The Scandinavian country is the largest holder of natural gas and oil in Europe. After the giant gas supplies of Russia, Norway is the biggest exporter of natural gas across the globe. It is also the seventh biggest exporter of oil in the world. Now, it is true that Norway's oil peaked in its production capacity in 2001, from 3.4 million barrels per day to current levels of 2 million. However, gas production has increased fairly steadily, today reaching 3.6 trillion cubic feet as of 2011. So my next guest has recently caught a controversy with his book, The Spider's Web. In this, he alludes to a secret global plan by wealthy financiers politicians, the intelligence services, and aided by the media in a conspiracy to subjugate and enslave the peoples of this planet. Wow. And that's all just before dinner time. <laughs> so without further ado, here he is, Mr. Paul Harrington. Now, Paul, your book, as I mentioned, is called The Spider's Web. And you say that there is a conspiracy by persons in the shadows to dominate the globe. Now, you look like a pretty smart guy. You're well turned out, very presentable. Are we to take any of this seriously? Isn't this just about selling books? Hello, Jack. Because some people have become a little cynical about this whole conspiracy movement that seems to have grown up these days. I can understand that. You see, to some, this just looks like a publishing trick. Anyone who wants to read it, they'll have to go to the local bookshop and pick up a copy. That's correct, Jack. We've been told this is because you fear that it may be blocked electronically. Yes. Or possibly false rewritten versions allowed to be downloaded just to discredit you. Have you read my book? I've read the introduction, the opening chapters. Because I didn't want to come here today to talk about the book, which has had plenty of advertising itself over the last few weeks. Oh, then... I came here today, Jack, to share a revelation I've had with you, so that you and your audience at home will hopefully understand how we came to the position our species is in today. Right. Then this should be interesting. With your permission? <clears throat> Fire away. I've come to the realisation that I am, in fact, Jesus Christ reborn. I'm sorry, Paul. Could you repeat that for me? You are... What is that again? I am the Son of God. Can you do miracles? <laughs> Could you change this glass of water into wine? Could you walk on the water, perhaps? I'm sensing some cynicism from your audience tonight. Uh, you think so? I do. The thing is, um... Oh, or well, should I call you something else? Like? Um, the Messiah? Or should I say that you are not the Messiah? You're a very naughty boy? I do understand how this might be a surprise to you and your viewers as it was to me. Uh, sorry, d just so I get it right, you weren't born the Son of God. Well, clearly I was. I just didn't realise it until much later. So, so how... How did you come to this understanding? I had a dream. 5.32 billion barrels of proven oil reserves are the figures given by the Oil and Gas Journal as of 1st of January 2012. This makes Norway owners of the largest oil reserves in Western Europe. The oil itself is positioned on the Norwegian continental shelf, the NCS, which covers the North Sea, the Norwegian Sea, and the Barents Sea. A... a dream? 
in which God came to me and informed me of my reason for being on this planet and the message he wished me to convey to his creation. Sounds pretty serious. It is, yes. Can we know what is this message? This is not the time to spread that message. The world is not yet ready to hear his message. Will it be ready to hear it any time soon? Well, that's for the Lord to decide. And when is that likely to be? That I do not know. Could it be today? I don't think so. What about tomorrow? Uh, I don't know. How about the day after tomorrow? I really couldn't say. How about a week on Wednesday? First of the month? End of the month? Somewhere in the middle of the month? When the mortgage is due? The utility bills? How about Christmas? How about the end of the financial year? What about a bank holiday? <laughs> Make yourself at home. Oh, I see you already have. Let me just check the phone, see if there are any messages. Nope, nothing. But then there wouldn't be, would there? It's become a lonely world, Hanson. No man is an island. We all need the comfort of human contact. You've been out on your own before. That was abroad. You'll survive. Sticks and stones. Sticks and stones. I have relatives, Hanson. I didn't come out of nowhere. People that care about me. People that don't want to see me hurt. You mean people that don't want to be hurt themselves? I have relatives that are shouted at in the street. They're now asked if they are one of my disciples. Can they raise the dead? One was even asked to visit a dying child. Not everyone sees the joke. You'd be surprised. I would be. I'd be very surprised. It was necessary. When you play these games, there are bystanders. People that get caught up in the crossfire. They don't know. They can't know. This will only work if you say nothing to them. Cut yourself off. No returned phone calls. No answered emails. No signed letters. It's safer for them. Is it? Yes. I wonder if it is. They only see me pretending to be the second coming. You never know. You might be. I doubt that. Didn't Jesus surround himself with tax collectors and prostitutes? Possibly. So he was used to a bit of rough company, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Yeah, but he never worked for this operation, did he? How do you know he didn't? I'm not asking you to sympathise, and frankly you don't have the knack. Just understand, it's not simple once the bridges are burnt. You feel alone? No one from Vauxhall visits anymore. Selling a lot of books, though, aren't you? Where are you on the Sunday Times bestseller list these days? Still in the top ten? Last time I looked, still on sale in the supermarkets. The only thing that would have been better would have been to have got it banned. Well, it didn't do Peter Wright any harm, did it? Uh, what's the spider's web worth each week now? But as you say, it must be lonely, with nothing more than your money to count during those long winter evenings. Why are you here, Hanson? What do you want? I've got something else for you to talk about. You never know, there might even be another book in this for you. Flight 273 left Frankfurt Airport at 19.53 local time. Destination, Washington. One third of the way across the Atlantic, the 787 Airbus, four-engine passenger plane broke apart and fell into the sea. Officially an act of international terrorism. All aboard were lost. Why this one? Why not? That's what my ex-wife used to say. We might be able to use that. Use her, you mean? It's a thought. She's in Australia. Someone could be sent. Saying? That you are unstable. People shouldn't listen to you. And if anyone did? Some people will. Some will listen to every word. The true believer will lap it up. Every syllable. Every idea. That's not the problem. Then what is? Credibility. But not too quickly. It must be a slow, slow thing. Oh? The public won't initially trust what you say, 
Why should they? They have to have time. Time? Time to discard what you say. And then time to think, you know, that's what that guy was going on about before. Like I said, building up credibility. So. So what? What's her name? Your ex-wife. Not read my five recently. I haven't been anywhere near it. I don't want anyone to even suspect that I might have. Ah, yes. If a deception is to work, we must deceive even our own. Yes. Lying to those closest to us, that's the real trick. Of course. If we can lie to them, the rest should be easy. Easy-er. It's never easy. Yes. So what's so special about this one? Her name is Christina Oleg. She was young, beautiful, joined the party in the early 90s. Left wing, a believer in a better world, a regional organiser. Rose through the ranks, becoming an advisor to Josef Anderson in 2004. He went on to become Prime Minister in 06. She followed him into government out of foreign aid. Travels to South America, Africa, Middle East. On the surface, the topic is debt relief to poor countries. On the side, banking reform. Reform of what? To what? Mr. Carrington! Mr. Carrington! Hello. <sighs> Loved your book. Uh, uh, thank you. That's, that's really nice of you to say. It's opened my eyes to all sorts of things that are going on in the world right now. It's only a starting point. Even after several years of research, I'm still finding out new things all the time. As far as I can see, everything you've written is correct. This world really is run by a group at the top of society that just wants to keep all the power for themselves. They want to maintain their position. Well, that's what I've come to believe. And your presentation. I've watched you twice. Thank you. Yes. In Cardiff and then again in Liverpool. Ah. Then you must have been there when that egg was thrown at me. Oh, that was awful. You did very well to carry on. Oh, I've had to dodge a few recently. People shouldn't do it. But they do. On the bright side, it did get you a lot of publicity. It was the only thing the press were interested in. You did well to avoid it. In truth, I think the person throwing the egg wasn't wearing their glasses that night. Right? Missed me completely. Splatters all over the curtains. And the theatre staff bundled the culprit out. I thought you were very calm under pressure like that. You know what I did before I wrote the book? You did mention it. In the introduction. Weren't you a secret agent or something? I worked for a front company that had a contract with the intelligence services. You see, if our missions, if you like, went wrong, we were always deniable. The seed of doubt, you mean? Sure, why not? And those very services have denied that you ever worked for them at all. A service that, by definition, operates in the shadows can't be seen. It was years before it was even acknowledged. Don't you all have licenses to kill? And cars that turn into submarines. And magnets that undo ladies' dresses. And I save those for the weekend. My guess is that you haven't approached me to ask about the intelligence services or even aliens running the world. What's your name? Anna. What's your surname? Green. Anna Green. Hello, Anna Green. I'm Paul. I know. Would, uh... Would you like to go for a coffee? Of course. So what do you do, Anna? Receptionist at a clothing warehouse. It's really boring. Oh? The telephone calls, deliveries, tradesmen and women. Every week the same as the previous. What kind of clothes? Children's age 3 to 12. We supply a couple of high street retailers. Sounds interesting. Does it? Really? Not as interesting as your job. My job? You show a different side of the world. The rest of us, we live very small lives. You've done things with your time. At the end, no one will say that you've wasted your life. I'm sure there are quite a few that would say that now. Was it exciting? You mean being in the intelligence service? More interesting than counting coat hangers. I wouldn't bank on it. It was a, a desk job, mostly. Serving queen and country. I gave myself over to the pursuit of someone else's agenda. I assure you, Anna, there is no greater waste of time than that. Lots of people are listening to you now. Anyone in the spotlight is always listened to, even if they've nothing to say. That's a bit harsh, isn't it? Is it? 
One of the biggest illusions is that the one with a microphone in front of them knows what they're talking about. So, you know everything and the rest of us are, what, hapless fools just lapping up whatever you say, just because you are standing up on a stage? Maybe people have turned up because they genuinely want to learn something. A lot of people think they are truth seekers. There would have been a time where people thought they were trailblazers or thrill seekers. Now they believe that if they read a book or watch a documentary, that they are uncovering the secrets of life. And they're not. Well, perhaps. If not from the media, publishing or the net, how else are they going to learn anything? We're not all going to get a hand on the shoulder and asked if we wish to serve our country. Actually, I answered an advert in the press and that, and that test on the website. How did you do on the observation test? I joined. But you didn't find the world of espionage interesting? Yeah, it was okay. But it's mostly a desk job. Paperwork, files, vetting people, offices throughout Soho. Perfect cover. Oh? Tell people you're just going to Soho, and they always assume you're going to visit some den of iniquity. And you weren't. I was a government employee. Where would I get the money? How's your coffee? I finished it. How's your tea? Cold. We could order some more. I've got some coffee at home. Casper Palm, aged 35. Joined the party in 98, worked firstly out of the regional branch, quickly rose up the ladder. By 2003, he was already advising the left wing in opposition, and then brought into the foreign branch of the Norwegian administration when they won the election. They were on the up, the good times upon them. Casper meets Christina, appeared to hit it off almost from the beginning. The two of them championed third world debt relief, even addressing Davos in 2006. Davos, so young. They both attended Oslo University, studying economics. Do you watch all these people? Do you want me to answer that? No need. Only those that could be interesting. I'm assuming these two are interesting. Never assume anything. Know it for a fact. Yes, Obi-Wan. They had some interesting friends. Oh. Lord Arthur Seacombe. As in Info Power Investments? Curiously, the very same. Controlling stake in the buzzard oil field in the British portion of the North Sea? Yes. Uh, we all have high hopes for the continued success of the buzzard oil field. You mean we've no other choices? Or we wouldn't have gone into Iraq otherwise, would we? Did anyone truly believe we were there to make sandcastles? Casper and Christina seem to get around a bit. We think they were being positioned to know the right people, speaking to those with influence, those that could pick up the phone and make things happen. You mean the decision makers? In essence, yes. And the Seacombs? Family has connections all over the world, and to the landed gentry over here. And over there? Oslo. Knows a lot of the Norwegian nobility. And through them, the government offices, no doubt. We wouldn't be talking otherwise, would we? So what can you tell me about the Seacombs? UK, UK oil, oil production, production in, in the North, North sea, sea peaked at, at 2.9 million barrels, barrels per day in the year 1999. 1999. Currently, Currently, UK, UK production, production capacity is somewhere in the order of about a million barrels, barrels per day, day well, well below British, British requirements. requirements. And, and from, from 2006, 2006 we will we'll never, never again, again be a net, net exporter, exporter of oil. oil. What do you fear? What a strange question. Is it? Don't people normally ask, what do you like? Or what do you love? Or what do you love to do? Or who you love? Or who you love? And the answer? And now we've not known each other very long. How long do you need to know someone? Very deep. I don't think so. You've never heard of love at first sight? I've heard of it. Then there you go. I've also heard of Father Christmas and the Easter Bunny. So you don't believe in either of those? An old man at the North Pole and a rabbit with chocolate? Not much, no. Do you? And yet you stand up in front of people and ask them to believe in things they don't know anything about. I do present evidence to things I talk about. It's not for belief's sake. But it's still belief. I don't know if aliens have landed or not, or whether the world is being run by a cabal of business leaders, or who shot one world leader or another. The truth is, 
we choose to believe in whatever makes sense of the world. If conspiracy answers the confusion, then confusion it is. Well, I wish you luck. Just because we don't see the big picture doesn't mean that there is one. I see that my lectures have just left you more confused. Maybe, sometimes, we are lied to for our own good? Oh? What if, say, just as an idea, that you knew that the world was going to come to an end? On the back of that, I'd probably sell more books. No. What I meant was, how would this change people? Would it change them? If people knew they only had a finite length of time, maybe. Why? Because they would choose to use the time more constructively. Not waste the time on things that were never important in the first place. Use the energy to make the world a better place. A place in which people from different backgrounds would come together in a spirit of love and understanding. You're quite an idealist. Sorry. Does all that sound foolish? No. No, it sounds very sweet. Sweet? The way people should be, rather than the way they are. The way people could be? What are you not telling me? What makes you think there is anything I'm not telling you? It's like there is always something you are not saying. As if being with me is just an... an act, for want of a better expression. You think that was acting? No. No, not that. But you. It's... As if you think someone is always listening to you. Don't forget we have GCHQ. Someone is always listening. What are you afraid of? What makes you think... You uh, don't sleep well. Sleep well? You don't sleep through the night. It's age. No, it's not. I'm a light sleeper. How do you know all the things you know? I've read a lot of files. Why hasn't someone told you to be quiet? Seacombe's private plane, a Gulfstream business jet, went down at the Italian-Swiss border. Going down over the Alps made the investigation rather difficult. The original conclusion was pilot error, isn't it always? However, when the spring thaw came, it was discovered in the radius of the newly found wreckage, the flight recorder, that the aircraft had in fact broken up. Not, Not on impact, impact with a mountain, mountain has that been, been the first, first assumption, assumption, but in the sky. The, the debris, debris pattern led, led the second inquiry team to come to the conclusion that the aeroplane had exploded without any indication of any problems to the pilots or those on board. In effect, it had been an explosive device. In other words, a bomb. Arthur Seacombe was the only passenger, and maintenance records revealed that it had only recently been given a full service. Pilot error, the usual reason given for incidents of this nature, could not be substantiated in this instance. So who was Arthur Seacombe? And what did he know? And equally important, who did he know? There's something I haven't told you. Something I feel I should have mentioned. Oh? Yeah. Something I've pondered about previously. Pondered about? Considered, then rejected. Not everyone within the firm agrees with this. With this? You're speaking off the cuff, as it were. I'm hardly the first. No. That is true, Uh, but the others were just selling books or trying to make names for themselves. A pain in the neck to all concerned, naturally, but that was all they were doing. And in the grand scheme of things, no one was ever really threatened, even if what they said was, in fact, a bang on the money. They were opportunists, seizing the moment and running with it. And you think I'm not? You joined the ranks. You were one of the team. You've been on the inside. You've been on the other side of the frosted glass at Vauxhall. You were one of us. I thought I still was. Not everyone knows that. But... but those that matter... they know that, don't they? Am I flying blind? 
How much protection do I have? We're looking out for you. How many are we? Perhaps we should stop. Maybe I should stop. You can't do that. We both know that in this profession people play for keeps. I assumed this was understood. I thought this was sanctioned. You told me the DG had signed off on this himself. You said I'd be protected. What am I supposed to do? Keep giving speeches, standing up in front of an audience like some sort of performing seal. I had three more public appearances to give, three more times to listen to stupid, ignorant interviewers encouraging audiences to laugh at me, and that would be it. My time in the spotlight over. There is no second book, Hansen. That was it. It was a one-book deal. And that deal is almost done. I can provide you with more information. More information? You want me to do this a second time? There is more to be revealed. This is crazy. No, it isn't. You've managed to establish yourself as a man in the know, as someone people can listen to. The people want the truth. They want someone to believe in. 